Record our shenanigans. All right. Shenanigans are open. We good? No, no, not yet. I heard it. There you go. There it is. PowerPoint. I will call the Board of Alderman work session to order. We have one item on the agenda, the FY21 audit presentation. Dun, dun, dun. This? Yes. Okay. Hopefully we have fresh batteries. Awesome. Check this out. Uh, you gotta point it over here. Point it John's head. Yeah. To the side, I think. Wow, it's work today. Didn't think well, we almost got it perfect. So close. We need one of those IR extenders. The battery. The battery. It worked. I'll give you the mouse. Okay. Hook it up to Chuck's treadmill and we'll charge it back up. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for meeting tonight. Uh, or eight's double after seven and triple for waiting. So it'll be a cheap, cheap meeting. No. Sounds good. Um, quick introduction. I'm Harold Ray, uh, signing director with Clifton Larson Allen. Uh, we've been working with this city since approximately 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. Um, Doug Host is the principal on the engagement responsible for signing the audit. Uh, he's worked with the city's audit for several years as well. And because of the single audit this year, the audit over the federal funds, he was again uh, involved with the audit. Um, I've been with uh, CLA for about the last 10 years, have about 13 years of public accounting experience, working uh, almost all that time with local governments and nonprofit organizations. Uh, the other people on the engagement are Jordan Townsend and Steve Davis. So some required communications that go along with the audit. Uh, a couple of things to point out. The financial statements are on a modified cash basis. So the revenues and expenses that you see in the audit are based on when the cash is received and when the cash is paid. So it's not considered full gap or accrual basis statements. Uh, one modification is included for any long-term debt and capital assets uh, that the city has. When it comes to the audit, the auditor's responsibility is to issue an opinion on whether the financial statements are presented fairly in all material respects. Uh, so what are some of the things that we look at? You know, the city says they have 12 million, 12 million in cash. We're looking to make sure that the city has 12 million in cash. If you had 4 million in sales tax revenues, we're checking that as well. Uh, we'll go through expenses and make sure they're appropriately classified and those sorts of things. What an audit is not is a fraud examination. That's not the uh, only purpose that we're looking at when we're coming in to do the audit. And it's not an opinion on your financial health. Uh, our goal is to present the financial statements and, and show everyone that they're fairly presented and people can reach their own conclusions on your uh, financial condition from that. As far as internal control communications, as we go through the audit, we do uh, walkthroughs over key control processes, try to gain an understanding of your uh, significant internal controls. If we note any deficiencies along that process, we'll uh, look at them to see how severe they are. They can fall into a few different buckets. So you have material weakness with the definition there on the screen. Uh, there could also be significant deficiencies or other deficiencies in order from most severe to least severe. Uh, the first item on here is financial reporting. So essentially we're saying here that we assist the city with preparation of the financial statements, but ultimately we're not part of the city's internal control process. Uh, and those financials still, uh, responsibility for those still resides with management and governments. Uh, this is something that you commonly see with municipalities of your size. Um, one thing you could do is look at outsourcing uh, that to another county firm to prep your financial statements, but typically that's not always a cost effective uh, approach. The second item, audit adjusting entries. Uh, if you look at that internal control communication, we highlighted the uh, larger audit adjustments that we made. The first one was we we're looking at repairs and maintenance testing. The city ended up uh, identify an additional $222,000 worth of capital assets through that process. And then we found an additional approximately 43,000 in capital assets after that uh, review as well. 
The second item had to do with some miscellaneous uh, payable accounts. We had an entry for just under $14,000 to correct some of those. Uh, the third item had to do with wastewater impact fees, uh, reclassifying cash between unrestricted and restricted. So what happens when everyone, uh, when someone pays an impact fee, it goes into a special account, and then those revenues can only be used for a certain purpose. Uh, as those funds are expended, it requires a manual adjustment to move that from the impact fee cash account to the unrestricted uh, cash account as those projects occur. And the last item was to uh, move the new Smithville Common CID activity into a separate fund. Um, along with that, we're currently in process of doing an audit for that CID and hope to have that finished up in the next couple weeks. Uh, single audit results. So this was a new process for the city this year. If you expend over $750,000 in federal funds over the course of uh, the uh, fiscal year, there's a requirement to have a single audit completed over that federal funding. So total federal expenditures for the year were $832,990. But out of that total, not every single program is going to get tested. We have to go through a risk assessment process, uh, certain things like quantitative amounts, such as dollar amounts of the programs and qualitative aspects, such as have you been audited before? Have there been uh, audit findings in the past? Those sorts of things all factor into that assessment. The program that we did test, uh, COVID-19 Coronavirus Relief Fund, essentially your CARES Act funding. The expenditures during the year for that were $588,000. And uh, we do a report that there were no findings uh, involved in that single audit. Uh, one of the additional federal funding sources during the year was ARPA funding. So that was about $1.1 million dollars that was received, but there were no expenditures during the year through that program. So uh, there weren't any funds there subject to the single audit for this year, but will be going forward. Uh, next, I'll jump into some of the financial results. So all governmental funds, revenues, and expenditures. Uh, that's your general fund, transportation, sales tax fund, capital improvement fund, all of those different governmental type activities. It excludes the water and wastewater activity as well as the sanitation fund. So this just gives you a highlight of revenues and expenses the last six years. Uh, for 2021, overall expenditures did exceed revenues. You can see the total revenues there, 8.6 and expenditures of 8.9. From there, we'll start going in a little deeper in each one. As far as months of expenditures and fund balance, you can think of this graph as your uh, reserve level. How many months could you operate without bringing in additional revenue? The uh, lighter colored line there is across all governmental funds, and you're going to see more uh, sways in that line just due to capital projects. So 2018, there were bonds issued. You see a big spike going up. The next year, you spend a lot of money uh, on capital projects related to those bonds, so then it dips down. If you look at the general fund, uh, just looking at those general activities, parks, uh, police department, administration, those sorts of things, had a reserve level of about eight and a half months within the general fund. Typically, uh, you'd say you want to see anywhere from three to six months, so it's a good, strong uh, reserve position there. As far as the different revenue sources across all governmental funds, the first one, uh, taxes, there's of course where you see most of your revenue sources coming in. The other one to note might be the intergovernmental revenues, essentially your different grants. Uh, the last couple of years between CARES, ARPA, uh, Rec Trails grants, you've seen some increases there but again as you can see uh, mostly relying upon sales tax or taxes and then here are the different tax categories so property taxes just steadily increase two to three percent every year as those valuations go up 
sales and use taxes, a couple different things going on with the increases here. You've had some new uh, taxes the last few years, capital projects, uh, parks and stormwater was a big one for 2021. That was an additional 614,000 uh, general use tax. Last year was an increase of about 147,000. Uh, capital improvements tax was up about 80,000. And then the rest of the increase is just increase in sales in the local community. As far as franchise taxes, those are going to be your taxes on utilities, such as cable and telephone services. Uh, almost all municipalities are seeing those stay relatively flat or decrease. As far as expenditures by department, uh, the general government uh, or administrative type services have been right around a million dollars the last couple of years. Uh, police, right around 1.75 million. The big spikes you see there are from capital outlay. So in 2018, there was about $2 million in bonds issued. In uh, 2019, another 3.6 million. So uh, bringing in those bond proceeds and then using them from their respective projects are what's driving those big increases in expenditures for those years. And then the last column is pandemic. So you see the CARES Act funding uh, and that being used the last couple of years. Uh, the tops cut off here a little bit, but this is the water and sewer fund. Uh, the top line is the operating revenue. So approximately $4.6 million for 2021, an increase of about 12%. Operating expenses, $2.7 million, down about 3%. So revenues go up, expenses go down. Operating income went up about $1.8 million. Once you factor in things like uh, taking out depreciation expense, looking at capital outlays, debt payments, the net cash increase in the fund was approximately uh, a little over $1 million. Then this is the sanitation fund. Uh, overall increases in revenues and expenses of about 5%. Uh, operating income stays pretty close to zero as that's essentially you're just uh, got a third party contractor for that and you're billing that back to uh, citizens. Here's an overview of the city's debt and how much is outstanding uh, in total at the end of fiscal year 2021 was just shy of $14 million, uh, $100,000 in a capital lease obligation for a street sweeper, general obligation bonds of approximately 5.7, and uh, debt within the water and sewer fund of a little over $8.1 million. Then uh, the city's cash position. So the big spike you're seeing there in 2018 has to do with issuance of debt again, uh, it, between 2021 and 2020, saw an increase of about $940,000 uh, or about an 8% increase. Then, that's high level overview. I, you've got several documents there. They go into a lot more detail, but I'd be happy to entertain any questions you may have or any other conversation. Any questions? Um, Mayor, just uh, one question. So this uh, ARPA funds are relatively new to each municipality. Um, I, I just, my guess is you're you're beginning to audit these across different municipalities that you're hired for, correct? Yeah. Yep. So really, it's just um, kind of stating what the inflow is and and what the outflow would be, and to make sure that's in line with the federal government's use yeah, of those funds. Yeah. So the federal government produces a compliance supplement every year that lists out here's all the different compliance aspects that go along with every single. Uh, federal program that's out there of which ARPA is one. And so it'll lay out the different compliance aspects that we need to test and that you need to be in compliance with. Uh, so we'll go through and look at what are some of your internal controls to make sure that you stay in compliance with what they're wanting to stay in compliance with and do tests over that, um, as well as just are you in compliance with what you need to be in compliance with. And again, that is over 
expenditures, not revenues. So it depends on whatever you're gonna spend in the next year. Anything else? They're letting you off easy. All right. No, all right. I don't know if that means I sufficiently uh, confused everyone or what, so. Very well put together as always. So. But anyway, there's my contact information. If you ever have any questions during the year, Feel free to reach out, call, email, whatever you want to do. I'd be happy to talk through anything with anyone. So also thanks to Cynthia and Stephen for helping us out. Get Is this your second audit. audit with us, Stephen? The first one was like your first week, right? <laughs> yeah. Much easier this time, right? You know, or you at least knew where the boxes of papers he was, a, he was trying to find financial records before he found the bathroom, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. That's that's a good finance director. Thank, thank right. you, Harold, for coming this evening, presenting to the board. Yep. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Do I have a second? I have a second. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Stay in adjourn. Have a good night. We still be nine o'clock, Chuck. I guarantee you, Lawrence is still talking about agenda item number three. <laughs> oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> Item on the agenda, and I think that um, he left and went to a soccer game and still came back. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you so much. Wait, did you? Oh, I thought you. I thought you. Were